We just need to move past the failed policies that we have proven don't work. Madam Vice President, you just laid out your economic vision for the future. Yeah. But still, there are lots of Americans who don't see themselves in your plans. For those who say these policies aren't for me, what do you say to them? Well, if you are hardworking, if you have a the dreams and the ambitions and the aspirations of what I believe you do, um, you're in my plan. You know, I, I have to tell you, I really love and am so um, energized by what I know to be the spirit and character of the American people. We have ambition. We have aspirations. We have dreams. The first one, just a fact check, okay. because your opponent there almost is no every little day. Okay. There is no okay. such thing as a little job. Okay, fair, fair. <laughs> um, because your opponent almost every day seems to be talking about this. So I just want to ask you yes or no. Okay. At any point in your life, have you served two all beef patties, special sauce, <laughs> lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, <laughs> on a sesame, sesame seed, seed bun, bun, working at a McDonald's? Yes or no? That's it. I have. Okay. Now the other job. Now and, the other but job. it was okay. not a small job. Like, I do okay. the fries. I mean, I, you know, yes. Okay, Trump is, I guess, bad. The people who support Trump are bad. The billionaires that she goes around with, I guess, are good. I, I think it's a very muddled thing, and I still don't understand. I think today was a mess for Harris. I mean, Joe Biden went on The View today and said he delegated all sorts of authority to her on domestic policy. We know that the Biden administration is not popular on domestic and economic policy. She gave a speech today saying we've got to move past the policies that people – think have failed. Well, people think the last four years are a failure. And from what I can tell from this interview tonight, which was really a home game, I mean, going on with this particular interviewer was like effectively interviewing with her campaign's press secretary. She had nothing, nothing new to say on the economy beyond this ridiculous pablum. You want to talk about aspirations and dreams? They're crushed in this country because of inflation and these kinds of interviews. And the day that she had today are not going to solve this. There she goes with those ambitions, aspirations, and dreams. Welcome back, Warriors. It's me, Linda B. Thank you all so much for joining me here today. You know that Kamala Harris had another interview. Oh, my goodness. Did she bomb another softball interview? But before we get back into it, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, watch the video to the end. Now, let's get back in. Expanding that child tax credit, or you mentioned housing before, giving that extra money for a first home. If you can't raise corporate taxes or if GOP takes control of the Senate, where do you get the money to do that? Do you still go forward with those plans and borrow? Well, but we're going to have to raise corporate taxes and we're going to have to raise, we're going to have to make sure that the biggest corporations and billionaires pay their fair share. That's just it. It's about paying their fair share. I am not mad at anyone for achieving success, but everyone should pay their fair share. And it is not right that the teachers and the firefighters that I meet every day across our country are paying a higher tax than the richest people in our country. Bill Gates just said it this week. If he was in charge of taxes, he would have paid more. But how do you find that line to make sure corporations are paying their fair share, but they're not leaving our country? Well, listen, I work with a lot of CEOs. I have spent a lot of time with CEOs. And I'm going to tell you that the business leaders who are actually part of the engine of America's economy agree that people should pay their fair share. They also agree that when we look at a plan such as mine that is about investing in the middle class, investing in new industries, investing in bringing down costs, invest in entrepreneurs like small businesses, that the overall economy is stronger and everyone benefits. Talk about that answer. I do, but here's what's a little tricky. She doesn't answer the question around if the GOP is controlling the Senate, if she can't raise corporate taxes, where is she going to get the money from, is, you know, to expand the child tax credit and do all the things she wants to do? And she says, we just have to do it. And that's great. And that's a campaign promise. But 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 the issue is, if it means we're just going to borrow again, then what we're doing is we're just never addressing the deficit. And back in the days when you were a proud Republican, debts and deficits matter. See. She's got a problem with answering questions, okay? You can ask Kamala Harris a question a thousand times. Where's the money going to come from? 
are people doing better today than they were four years ago? It's a simple yes or no. She's going to go into another word salad. She's going to go into ambitions, aspirations, and dreams a thousand times. She cannot answer questions. And my thing is, she cannot get softer than BSNBC. Okay, this is friendly territory. She's been on all the friendly territory networks. Donald Trump has been in hardcore territory. And she's doing these interviews now. And, you know, she's setting it up a certain way, kind of softballing it, friendly territory. But what we should push her on is, can you go on Fox? Can you go and do a hardball interview in not so friendly territory? She won't do that. He has. He has done it. He will. Donald Trump will go anywhere. I'm, I'm just saying he'll go anywhere. NABJ where she didn't show up and she couldn't even answer that question is good. The hosts were standing there looking at each other as she ran off the stage. She was like, all right, see ya. And they were like, okay. And I know those people felt some type of way. They might lie and say whatever the, they're, they're leftists. Okay, you got two men. Well, I'm not going to talk about them. But the woman, she was a little upset with. You guys remember that. And she cannot for the life of her answer questions. We need to know how you're going to do things. Lay it out. Make it plain. Don't go into, we are an op optimistic people. We are, we love, our, we love our country. And for anyone, that's why I talk about the economic opportunity plan. We're going to have, yes, if you want to work hard, we're going to help the middleman. We're going to do this and we're going to increase taxes. And not only does she say things that don't answer the question, it looks like in her face, in her body language, she's not even sure what she's saying. And see, that makes me go, you know, she she's, <laughs> and don't get me started about the other things that she wants to to make into law, you know, illegals getting certain surgeries done to their bodies. Like, why should we as taxpayers pay for that? But they don't ask her those questions. They don't. The fact of the matter is we trust Donald Trump more with the economy than her. We trust Donald Trump more with the border than her. Things were better under him than her. And I want somebody to ask her the question, why haven't you done that right now? and get a straight answer. Don't give me no, you know, we got to clean up a mess because of what Donald Trump did with the COVID. He had no parts of that. And the only reason it dipped for him under his presidency was because of a pandemic. Okay. It was because of a pandemic. And that was against the Republicans never wanted to shut the country down. That was Democrat stuff. All right, let's check out something else. By going after those who engage in price gouging. Yeah. But as somebody who supports free markets, who's a capitalist, how do you go after price gouging without implementing price controls? Because once we get in this zone, people start to get worried and they say, I don't know what she stands for. So just to be very frank, I am never going to apologize for going after companies and corporations that take advantage of the desperation of the American people. And I, as attorney general, I saw this happen in the midst of an emergency, whether it be an extreme weather event or even the pandemic, we saw it where those few companies, not the majority, not most, but those few companies that would take advantage of the desperation of people and jack up prices. Yeah, I'm going to go after them. Yes, I'm going to go after them. And that is part of a much more comprehensive plan on what we can do to bring down the cost of living, including housing. And All right. So the main way to get down prices is to, as Donald Trump says, drill, baby, drill. This going after doing the price control thing, I think has been proven not to work. Um, this is something that communist countries have done and these things have failed. We are a capitalist society. The way to do it is to be more energy independent. And she has since changed her position on fracking. Remember, this is the same woman that said, I absolutely will ban fracking. Then she was like, well, no, I didn't say that in 2020. I didn't say it. I am in favor of fracking now. She's the reason why we have this inflation. She was the tie-breaking vote. On this vote, the
The yeas are 50, the nays are 50. The Senate being equally divided, the Vice President votes in the affirmative and the bill as amended is passed. <laughs> She was the tie breaking vote. Okay. So when it comes to spending and how things are going right now, we, you, we can be for sure that Kamala Harris is actually personally responsible, no matter how she wiggles her way out of it. Now, those of us who want the truth, we're going to go out there and find it. But those of us who depend on the media, those are the Democrat voters because you guys have misinformation. You look at the news and you just look at your fact check on your phone and you think you've done all your homework. Go out and find what really happened. Let's check out some more of this interview. Last four years, there have been tremendous economic wins and you've just laid out yeah. a big plan. But still, polling shows that more li most likely voters still think Donald Trump is better to handle the economy. Why do you think that is? Well, here's what I know in terms of the facts. Donald Trump... Uh, left us with the worst economy since the Great Depression when you look at, for example, the employment numbers. It was during COVID and employment was so high because we shut down the government, we shut down the country. Even before the pandemic, he lost manufacturing jobs by most people's estimates, at least 200,000. He lost manufacturing plants, ask the auto workers how he lost auto plants. We have grown over 20 new auto plants. Um, he has an agenda. Let's just deal with it right now going forward, not to mention what happened in the past. He has an agenda that would include making it more difficult for workers to earn overtime, an agenda that would include cutting off access to small business loans for small businesses, an agenda that includes tariffs to the point that the average working person will spend 20% more on everyday necessities and an estimated $4,000 more a year on those everyday necessities to the point that top economists in our country, from Nobel laureates to, to, to people at, at, at Moody's and Goldman Sachs, have compared my plan with his and said my plan would grow the economy, his would shrink the economy. Some of them have actually assessed that his plan would increase inflation and invite a recession by the middle of next year. So the facts remain that Donald Trump has a history of taking care of very rich people. And I'm not mad at anybody for being rich, but they should pay their fair share. But tax cuts for the billionaires and the top corp corporations in our country, and then not really paying much attention to middle class families. My perspective on the economy is when you grow the middle class, America's economy is stronger. And there's empirical evidence to prove my point correct. Then let me ask you about taxes, because lots of people will say, I don't like Donald Trump, but he cut my taxes. He didn't just cut corporate taxes. He cut individual taxes. Now, that expires next year. And there are some people confused, saying, I don't know what's going to happen next year. Under a Harris administration, at what income level should someone expect their taxes to go up? And that state and local tax deduction that's currently capped and matters to a lot of people in blue states... Are you going to lift that cap? So first of all, when it relates to anybody making less than $400,000 a year, your taxes will not go up. Your taxes will not go up. And in fact, under my plan, taxes for 100 million Americans will actually be cut, including $6,000 a year for, for young couples for the first year of their child's life in a tax cut, a tax credit, essentially, uh, by expansion of the child tax credit. So it's interesting <laughs> that Kamala Harris was talking about Donald Trump is for rich people and not the middle class, and that she wants to help the middle class. But the interviewer, right after that, said that the tax cuts that Donald Trump implemented will expire next year. She just really called Kamala out for lying right then with the very next question. I know you guys saw that. That is insane. <laughs> what? what just happened? I mean, she literally said Donald Trump has tax cuts that will expire next year. So whatever, whatever that mumbo jumbo Kamala Harris was talking about, it was not true. And let's check out what Goldman Sachs actually are saying. My team, of course, has made news of late suggesting that the bigger boost to growth would come from the Harris economic plan, at least over the first couple of years. She mentioned it last night. 
you feel the same? So that report, which was mentioned last night in the debate, came from an independent analyst. And it's, it's interesting, Scott. I think a lot more has been made of this than should be. What the report did is it looked at a handful of policy issues that have been put out by both sides, and it tried to model their impact on GDP growth. And the reason I say a bigger deal has been made of it is what it showed is the difference between the sets of policies that they put forward was about two-tenths of one percent. Okay, so economy grows, okay, if you took these particular sets of policies they looked at, and by the way, we have no idea whether these policies, these things that are talked about will ultimately be implemented, what was the growth impact? And the differential was two-tenths of one percent. So, you know, I think our clients are trying to look at what's going on from a policy perspective and make judgments. I think this blew up into something that's bigger than what it was intended to be. So that was the CEO, CEO of Goldman Sachs, saying that the difference between the two policies is like literally two-tenths of one percent and more has been made out of it than what it should have been. So he's inching his way around it. And in any event, you know, we got experts that say one thing, this one says something else. He literally did not really go along with what Kamala Harris said. It might have been two tenths of 1% in one area and she made it out to be more than what it is. But what we know, those of us who live this every day, not some rich CEO, we know what we spent for gas. We know what we were spending for groceries. We know what interest rates were. We know that the cities were not being overran with illegal immigrants. We know these things. We don't need somebody who to tell us, okay? We see it. And I challenge everyone, every single person, everybody, <laughs> okay? And another thing that was really interesting too, you know, Joe Biden was recently on The View, and he said something quite astounding. And as vice president, there wasn't a single thing that I did that she couldn't do. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to delegate her responsibility on everything from foreign policy to domestic policy. That was out of his own mouth. <laughs> you heard the man. There was not one thing that I did that she couldn't do from domestic policy to foreign policy. Okay, domestic policy, we already talked about the inflation and the crime, right? Interest rates, prices, everything terrible, right? And we're also in a lot of wars ver on the verge of World War III. So Joe Biden is saying, Joe Biden is saying, Kamala Harris did this. Wow, the old president of the United States. But you know what? Those clefty lefties that you all have selective hearing. Clefty lefties have selective hearing. <laughs> the people there that are stressed, that feel that they're at capacity. Communities around the country that have legal immigration, many have said we're 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 at capacity. And many feel like the government has said to them, well, adapt, sit down, be quiet. This is how it is. What would a Harris administration do for those communities who've taken in many, many legal immigrants but are at capacity? Well, first of all, we do have a broken immigration system mm -hmm. and it needs to be fixed. And if we take a step back, months ago, some of the most conservative members of the United States Congress came together with others, proposed a border security bill. That would have put 1,500 new border agents on the border to help those hardworking border agents who are there right now working around the clock. Would have put more money into stemming the flow of fentanyl, which is killing Americans around our country and devastating communities. Would have put more resources into our ability to prosecute transnational criminal organizations, which in my career I've prosecuted. Donald Trump got word of the bill realized it was going to fix a problem he wanted to run on and told him to kill the bill, don't put it up for a vote. He killed a bill that would have actually been a solution because he wants to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. And that's part of what needs to be addressed. And my pledge is that when elected president, if the American people will have me, I will bring that bill back and I will sign it into law. And we need a comprehensive plan. That includes what we need to do to fortify not only our border, but deal with the fact that we also need to create pathways for people to earn citizenship. This is insane. So first of all, she's the border czar, right? And things got worse under her. Okay, this is literally the worst 
border in American history. She's saying that Donald Trump called some conservatives and told and, and, and squashed the bill, had them not vote on it. First of all, Donald Trump said he didn't need a bill to close the border. And he said she doesn't need a bill. He said in the, the last words of the debate, you know, that ABC so-called debate, he said, you can close the border right now. You can do it right now, but you won't do it now. She, we, she, the, the interviewer was talking about how cities are at capacity, right? Eric Adams had said the mayor of New York City got to do a video on him because they, he's been indicted. He was one that said, we'll be a sanctuary city. And then he came and said, you know what? We got too many. This is too much. And the interviewer just said cities that are at capacity. You know, New York already had a whole lot of people. They didn't need to add to that. OK. And so Kamala Harris literally just said to people who are already strained to capacity in these cities, New York, Chicago, Springfield, Ohio, with those Haitians, all over. Every state is a border state right now, okay? There's a lot going on in a lot of different states. Some are in the news more than others. Kamala Harris, with a cackling behind, literally said, we got to find a way for citizenship for these people. So you mean you're not going to send them back? We already knew that. You so we're going to continue to be strained. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Because we got about 20 million at the high estimate between 10 and 20 million people over here. And it's hard to get an exact number. I've heard anything from over 10 to 15 million to 20 million or even over 20 million. So cities are at capacity. She just said they'll find a way to citizenship, which is amnesty. So basically she just said it's going to stay like this. If you really pay attention, she said it's going to stay like this because we're going to find a way to give them amnesty so they don't have to go back. So it's going to continue to be strained. What the heck? Okay. I can't deal with her. I really cannot deal with her. Joe Biden just said she was in on every decision. There was nothing he did that she couldn't do. Okay, we got the border that's overran, fitting all and everything. They could fix it now. Donald Trump said he didn't need a bill. They, they opened the border when they got into office. They opened it. They're the ones that caused the problem. And she was a tie-breaking vote. Tie-breaking vote. I showed you that. So listen to me, everybody. Every problem that America has right now lies at the very feet of Kamala Harris with her dreams, aspirations, and ambitions. Her aspirations and dreams and ambitions must be for everything to stay like it is or get worse. That is insane. And she did not do well in this interview. She would impress me if she could just not say Anything about growing up middle class, don't say anything about your dreams, aspirations, and ambitions. Don't say anything about you working at McDonald's because we really don't care. Give us a solid plan that you actually will implement. Don't say, I don't want to even hear the word opportunity economy again. I just can't with her. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You all be blessed. Love God, your families, these United States of America. And as they always say, march on warriors.